In every living thing, there is a secret code. It decides the color of your eyes, the shape of your face, even the beating of your heart. For centuries, humans searched for the source of life's instructions. The answer was hidden in a molecule, so small, yet so powerful, it would change the world forever. In the 1800s, a monk named Gregor Mendel began crossing pea plants. He noticed that traits like flower color and seed shape followed patterns. He recorded everything carefully, using mathematics to explain inheritance. His work planted the first seeds of modern genetics, though the world ignored him at the time. By the early 1900s, scientists were desperate to know what molecule carried genetic information. Many believed proteins were the answer, since they looked complex and diverse. DNA, by contrast, appeared simple and boring, made of just four letters. The scientific community was convinced life's code had to be written in proteins, not DNA. In 1944, Oswald Avery and his colleagues made a daring discovery. They showed that DNA, not protein, could transfer traits between bacteria. It was the first direct proof that DNA might be the molecule of heredity. Yet the scientific world still hesitated, doubting something so simple could carry life's instructions. In 1952, Alfred Hershey and Martha Chase performed a clever test using viruses. They labeled protein with one dye and DNA with another, then watched which one entered bacteria. Only DNA went inside, proving it carried genetic instructions. At last, the evidence was undeniable. DNA was the code of life. Around the same time, Erwin Chargaff uncovered a vital clue. He found that DNA always contained equal amounts of adenine and thymine and equal amounts of guanine and cytosine. These simple ratios hinted that the bases might pair together. It was a puzzle piece waiting for the right minds to solve. By the early 1950s, a scientific race was underway. Teams across the world battled to uncover DNA's structure. Careers, reputations, even Nobel Prizes were at stake. The air grew thick with rivalry, ambition, and the hunger for discovery. In 1952, Rosalind Franklin captured a photograph that would change science. Known as Photo 51, it revealed a clear X pattern the mark of a helix. Her skill and precision provided the strongest evidence yet. But the race was far from over and her work soon became entangled in controversy. By now, the world knew DNA was the molecule of heredity. The challenge was clear. What was its structure and how did it work? Scientists stood on the edge of history, racing toward the answer. The question was no longer if DNA mattered, it was who would solve its greatest mystery first. Rosalind Franklin was a master of precision. Her X-ray diffraction work was years ahead of its time. She revealed patterns in DNA that no one else could see so clearly. Every photograph she captured carried the fingerprints of a hidden structure. Yet Franklin's brilliance clashed with her colleague, Morris Wilkins. Misunderstandings and tension filled their partnership. Instead of collaboration, rivalry grew in their own lab. This divide would play a key role in how history unfolded. At Cambridge, two ambitious scientists were also chasing DNA's secret. James Watson, young and brash, joined forces with Francis Crick, older and sharp. They believed building physical models could reveal what X-rays alone could not. But they were in a race against both time and rival teams. Then came the turning point. 
Without Franklin's direct permission, her crucial data was shared with Watson and Crick. The X pattern on photo 51 screamed one answer, a helix. It was the missing piece they had been searching for. The road to the answer was not smooth. Watson and Crick built model after model, only to tear them apart in frustration. Each failure pushed them closer to the truth. Trial and error became the rhythm of discovery. Then, in early 1953, everything clicked. The two strands wound around each other in opposite directions. Bases paired exactly as Chargaff's rules predicted, A with T, G with C. At last, the structure of DNA revealed itself, the double helix. In April 1953, the world finally saw the answer in print. The famous Nature paper announced the double helix to science. Watson and Crick received the spotlight for their model. Franklin's essential contributions appeared in the same issue, but without the credit she deserved. Years later, in 1962, the Nobel Prize honored Watson, Crick, and Wilkins. By then, Rosalind Franklin had already passed away from cancer. Nobel rules forbid posthumous awards, leaving her name absent. The discovery of life's most important structure was complete, but history carried a shadow. The most common form of DNA is called BDNA. It is a right-handed helix perfectly balanced with repeating dimensions like clockwork. Each base pair stacks neatly, creating the stable code of life. This design is so precise it allows DNA to store information without breaking down. But DNA does not always follow the rules. In dry conditions, it shrinks into ADNA, short and wide. In certain sequences, it flips into ZDNA, a left-handed spiral that shocked scientists when first discovered. These unusual shapes can control how genes are switched on or off. DNA can also fold into exotic shapes. One example is the G quadruplex, a four-stranded knot that often appears at the ends of chromosomes. Another is the I motif, a twisted structure that forms under certain chemical conditions. These unusual forms may hold secrets for cancer research and new medicines. In human cells, DNA cannot float freely. It is wrapped around proteins called histones, forming structures called nucleosomes. These nucleosomes coil and fold to fit nearly two meters of DNA inside a tiny nucleus. Without this packaging, DNA would never stay organized. Bacteria have no nucleus, but their DNA is still tightly managed. Their chromosomes are usually circular and coiled like springs. Enzymes called topoisomerases cut and twist the DNA, preventing dangerous tangles. This supercoiling is vital for survival in harsh environments. At the tips of chromosomes lie protective caps called telomeres. They repeat the same short sequence over and over like a buffer zone. Special proteins and G quadruplex structures shield these ends from damage. Without telomeres, DNA would unravel with each cell division. DNA can also carry marks that control how it works. Chemical tags like methyl groups can switch genes off without changing the letters of DNA itself. Histones, the proteins DNA wraps around, can also be marked to open or close regions of the genome. This epigenetic system acts like life's volume dial. The double helix was only the beginning. DNA is a dynamic force of nature. If you're a student, teacher, or just curious about the science that shapes us, we've built this page to give you a deeper look, from DNA's discovery to its modern applications in medicine and technology. Want to keep learning with us? Follow our journey on social media for updates, interactive content, and more fascinating science stories. Thank you for exploring with us. Every click, every question, and every moment of curiosity brings science to life. And we're glad you're part of that journey.